let's talk about On Blue's Waters by Gene Wolfe, the first book in his book of the short sun. I'll structure this like I, I often do with things that are continuations of series, like I'll give a, a completely spoiler free or meaningfully spoiler free micro review or short review, then I'll talk a bit more for people who have read the rest of the solar cycle. And I'm going to put it that way people who have read Book of the New Sun, Earth of the New Sun, Book of the Long Sun, because this is, if you're looking at it that way, this is the final sub cycle of the 12 books. Uh, the first thing is, uh, very quickly, if you're wondering, well, should I not even bother to hear the review? Uh, well, feel free to click off. But um, if you've not read any of the other Solar Cycle books, this is technically, I think, just about, and it, one of the reviews, I think the Seattle Times review on the back, um, and very positive about it, does say it can be read as the first book in its own series. And I think that's true. I think there's a limited sense in which it's pretty, well, rather, it pretty obviously structurally stands alone. I think, though, you probably should read the rest. You know, that's a tough thing, actually, in that I'm going to say this is a, a great book and one of Wolf's best, is that um, its real depths are gate-kept, in that sense, behind eight other books. And there are eight other great books, and you should read them, but um, nine other great books. But uh, there's just a caveat there. So, um, what, what to say about this, then? Um, in it, um, a this is... This is this is using, okay, let, let's say there's, um, you can, because what you get for free before you start is the proper names in the text, which is a sort of uh, dramatis personae and, and certainly connects into when I've talked about Book of the Long Sun being intentionally a stage play. And you get a letter at the start before the actual title page, before the title page, the lighting is crazy today, uh, you get a letter to, from uh, the men of Pajaroku, and it's saying to every town, you know, we, we left friends and families in the light of the long sun for this new wall we share with you. We would greet our brothers at home if we could. And they want to go and they want to fly into into space on a lander, um, on a kind of like a, a ship. And they're saying people should send uh, someone if they can. Um, and they're not going to wait long. So that's it. These people are going to send a ship into space uh, to go and visit something in space. And you should send someone if you can. And... Um, what you then get is what are essentially two stories being narrated by someone called the Rajana of Gaon. It's, but that is to say, he's talking about his current day and he's talking about some stuff in the past. Um, and though the, even this statement may be controversial for Wolfians who have read this book and, and the sequels, um, I think that it, one thing, it's relatively easy in Wolf terms, and Wolf is a complex author, to say, look, there's this story where he talks about what he's now doing, and then he, there's a story he talks about how uh, everything that's happened before, right? You know, roughly, if you like, the main events of what would seem to be uh, the trilogy's story, um, this travel around the solar system, doing stuff, and you know, try, trying to, particularly for the, the, this character, to try to help his his own hometown and neighbours by. Um, uh, finding a beloved leader and finding some key resources and that's the kind of so what you've got is these two stories running alongside each other and and because it's this is a very Wolfian thing you have constant foreshadowing in the sense of he's in the present talking about his present events and then he mentions stuff he hasn't mentioned in the past narrative and then he goes back to the past narrative and you're aware that there are always these shadows lowering over um, the past narrative because you know that there are other things that are going to come because he's already mentioned them um, so, yeah, it's a complex narrative. Um, there are elements of it which are probably easier in a very limited sense than some people might think. But it's, it's tough, it's complex, and um, it's intentionally challenging. Some people would say these books, these three books, uh, I have the other, the other two here. Um, these three books are Wolf's Most Challenging. Um, by the way, I managed to get printed by Amazon. You have the first two books in the trilogy printed by Lightbox of, I've got the third, which is a um, good, I don't know, third of an inch, half an inch taller. It's very hard to get the perspective, but you can just about see there uh, between these two books, you know, there is a difference, which is very annoying. Uh, but yes, uh, because they've been print on demand, which is great because otherwise they just wouldn't be available, would they? Um, but I'd say On Blue's Water, Waters is, though it is, 
arguably only a third of a book. Some people would say maybe more than even when people talk about Book of the New Sun or Book of the Long Sun. This is one long novel. I think really the other two have a lot of that too. But yeah, one long novel, roughly the size of Book of the New Sun or Book of the Long Sun as well. Um, On Blue's Waters is a great book. It's a great book. Uh, it is... It has the condensed style that Wolf adopted in the middle of his career, uh, which I'm told is because he was told he had to make his books shorter. And so he, uh, he's in Book of the Long Sun onwards, he writes in a very condensed fashion. Um, and there's a loss to this, a loss in one way when you compare it to some of his, I think, Peace, for instance, it, a fairly early book of his is really beautifully written. Uh, but I think there's also great gain. It's very much, it's, it's a development. It's a different thing. And so it's beautifully written, it's elliptically written, you're, um, you're often realising something as he par- makes a comment in passing or as he mentions something about what is going to happen which necessarily reveals something about what has happened or is happening or a, de- a half description of something. And there's so often wonderful surprise and shock or um striking moments of beauty that are kind of you come at you from from you know come at you sideways because he hasn't given it up front he hasn't just said here's all the things here's all the things you should like or be impressed by or find beautiful and so he's a wonderful writer he's a wonderful writer of plot um i've kind of already suggested that i think that might be the case because i like this very complexly plotted book um but it's the plot is constantly interlinking with these big mysteries and questions because Wolf is a mystery writer essentially always every not just the one detective novel but all of them are mystery novels really and he is kind of linking back and forth between the past and the present and there's always a sense that um you're because because the narrative and this will be familiar to people who have read any of his books but I'm I'm thinking uh, particularly actually the other solar cycle books the sense that he is, um, you know, you have a narrator who cannot get round to giving you the information that seems to be what they want to give. Some people find this frustrating, but they're not long books. They're, these are each 400 pages um, and they're so densely packed with action. Uh, there is a gag at one point, and uh, don't count this as a spoiler really at all, but it's, it's, it's a line. I say it's a gag. I think it is a gag, but it's a line about, you know, if I'd narrated everything I'd done, we wouldn't have got to this much earlier point by now. Um, this idea of kind of how the narrator might narrate or how other people might narrate the story. And you think that it feels something like a wolf reference to something or another. But, you know, there are other authors who simply would, in 1,200 pages, have done a third of the story. And Wolf has, it has condensed it down. And though the narrator is intentionally, frustratingly coy, um, things come out both at, uh, over the court, initially at least, indirectly, you know, the the author gives something away and long term directly. And this is familiar again to people who've read Wolf books. Um, and the characters are, he is a profound observer of the human and he is a deeply humane writer. And this is something which I think again comes all the way from the fifth head of Cerberus onwards, but the idea that um, that these these are real people, uh, that means they're actually, because of this is how Wolf sees people, it, it, insanely confusing and complex. You know, they're, they're not... And there's not simple arcs either. We're not talking about like, oh, this is a really satisfying, cool character arc. I mean, to give a, an example from a movie, the Lord of the Rings movies, uh, because I think it's a good, a good example. The Aragorn character arc, there's really key beats. It's really beautifully done, really effectively done, very positive, very pro that. Uh, but Wolf sort of is like, mm, people are complex, aren't they? Then you could get something like that, but it's going to be sticky and messy and confusing. And especially if that person is narrating it to you, you're not going to, really always they're going to be confused about it and sometimes perhaps understand things in a very subjective way and when they look at other people's character arcs that's going to be the same so wolf is great at these creation of characters but you've got to you've got to follow the journey there's not kind of an easy thing where you know that the beats are going to go like this 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 necessarily so yeah i i I think it's a, a great book i recommend it i recommend it particularly as i say i read the other nine books first uh, as intimidating as that sounds uh, they are mostly quite short books by epic fantasy epic sci-fi standards you know 300 pages whatever um you know if if you uh, read the blurbs of each and find the others impossibly boring then feel free to start on a short sum but i don't think it, not many people would would say that 
I'll switch now to assuming you've read the solar cycle. Obviously, everything I've said beforehand already applies. Uh, but if you've read everything up to now, what I'd say is what we have is um, you have a narration from the perspective of Horn, writer of the Book of the Long Sun, the Book of Silk, who is now writing what he kind of says is the Book of Horn. So this perspective of Horn saying, I, I have ended up to, to go, you know, for various reasons, to go to Padraku to to return to the wall, to return to the generation ship up in orbit or up, up in solar orbit at least of this uh, solar system which is presumably the same solar system as old earth of Book of the New Sun and he wants to go and find Silk and he wants to go and get some other stuff that's kind of relevant to people surviving and doing well and trying to rebuild a civilization generate a generation on or most of a generation on from leaving the wall. Uh, so yeah, it's a really interesting book structurally. It's a really interesting book in terms of you have, n in a sense, you have a new narrator, and there's a few things going on with that, as there always are. But what I mostly mean is, Horner's narrator of the Book of Silk, Book of the Long Sun, is um, is a third person narrator who is largely reliable. Um, but you know, there's obviously the twist. You know, as you re realise, it's not strictly a, a, a omniscient third person, uh, but instead a very partial third person, and hence why some characters are presented more or less negatively. And that, as you know, in the epilogue to Book of the Long Sun. Um, but you go from essentially a historical narrator to a first person narrator who is not doing the same thing as in as in Book of the Long Sun. Uh, the narration does not serve the same purpose. Uh, it's much more confessional, it's much more, much more private, much more personal. Um, and so, even to the degree you're saying, oh, well, look, this is the same narrative voice, it's not the same narrative role or structure. Uh, yeah, it's incredibly clever. Uh, it is something where what's going on in terms of engaging with the authorial mind and what's going on in terms of revealing the world of, of um, Blue, which perhaps is Ushus, um, what's going on with all of that is so rapidly deep. Um, it's, it's invigorating. It's something where this is, I think, Wolf at his very finest and um, isn't, isn't not as approachable as Book of the Long Sun, and it's uh, uh, not as voluptuous as Book of the New Sun, um, but it is uh, probably pound for pound um, the most effective book by Wolf I've read, um, because what it is not as approachable and it's not as voluptuous, but it is so effective and so efficient and so good at packing every word with meaning, every phrase with meaning, and freighting every scene with meaning, and giving you a narrator who um yeah is 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 so different to any other narrator i can uh, you know i can think of in wolf even though you get narrators like this what i mean is you every narrator every first person narrator of wolf's has echoes of other first person narrators um and uh certainly um there are hints it, it, it you know you'll get hints of severian and you'll get hints of um the voice behind the Book of the Long Sun, and you'll you'll get hints of Abel and the Wizard Knight. You'll get hints of Old and Weir and Peace, um, in terms of the but but in terms of lots of kind of small elements, and they certainly feel like there are both callbacks and and through lines from other narrators and stories, not just in the solar cycle, but it's also just entirely its own thing. And and uh, the Rajan of Gaon is. Um, is a just a fa fantastic character of his own and a very effective character of his own you know maybe wolf's most moving character um i think it's also interesting looking at the um the parallel plots and uh just in, just in terms of you are uh, presented with a different set of problems and questions to even when they seem to address some of the same things um, at, than anything you've seen in the solar cycle or if you read other wolf in um, other wolf books I know at least. And I think uh, it's, I, I, I kept trying to think, uh, there's a few books that, that do the uh, parallel and converging uh, plot thing or, or kind of different in time and space. U use of weapons by Ian M. Banks is an obvious one, um, I think, uh, though very different to this. 
uh, in terms of how it does that. But I think it's uh, technically a hard thing to pull off and he pulls it off very well. Um, and yeah, I think uh, there's also, there, you get you learn about stuff that happened after the Book of the Long Sun. And I, I, I love Long, Long Sun and I think uh, um, if uh, you do and you want to know more about what happened to those characters, to Mater and Marble and to Mucor and to uh, Horn and Nettle um, and to Scleroderma um, and whoever else, basically. Um, you, you find out lots here. There are also moments that are, of realising something else must be the case about what happened on the wall or afterwards and so on. That's great. And there's also the continued investigation of uh, the religious themes that have crossed the whole solar cycle, which I think are actually coherent and continuous um, and, um, and are for me, very interesting. And I think, yeah, it's very satisfying. Uh, so yeah, I, I certainly do recommend On Blue's Waters. Um, if you've read it, tell me what you think in the comments and uh, I'll see you next time.